For as long as I can remember, I've been playing video games. In fact, I've owned or played on just about every system since the original NES, uh, with some of my favorite systems being the Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, and the original Xbox system. Uh, I've also been gaming on PCs since back in the day when computers still used a 3.5 inch or even a 5.25 inch floppy disk, with some of my PC favorites being Myst, Knox, Command and Conquer, and Need for Speed. I remember playing in the basement with my dad for hours upon hours back when physics used to suck in video games, uh, trying to see who could get the best crashes in Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. Yeah, I'm getting kind of old. However, in the last few years, something's changed, and I found myself not just wanting a computer that I can game on, but also one that I can create on, specifically for creating videos on YouTube, like this one as well as editing photos, including my favorite type of photography, landscape photography. So when building my brand new streaming and content creation machine, uh, which I did a review on in my last video on the channel, which you can find linked somewhere here in the corner, uh, I decided it was also time to upgrade to a new monitor, but I wanted to find one that was not only good for gaming, but would also work great when it came to editing photos or color grading footage for my YouTube videos, as most gaming monitors, while great for gaming, obviously, <laughs> are not that great when it comes to needing super accurate colors like you do when you're editing photos or videos. While I thought picking out a new monitor would be the least of my headaches when putting together a new system, I quickly realized it wasn't gonna be as easy as I thought. You see, I realized that most monitors were made for either one or the other, and there really wasn't a ton of options when it came to monitors for doing both gaming and creating content. Asking for help on Reddit or any other really online source didn't yield great results either, as the most common response was to simply buy two separate monitors, one for gaming and one for content creation. For myself, that just wasn't an option, as then I'd also have to figure out a way to get the monitors to like magically move around my desk, depending on which one I wanted to use, and because I have a little bit of OCD, I would never be able to stand having to face different directions to look at different monitors uh, each time I needed to switch tasks. Luckily, a friend recommended I take a look at the LG Ultrawide 34GN850 as it features some impressive gaming stats while also offering enough for it to be a great content creation monitor as well. After using it for some time now, I thought I'd create a little review to help others that may be in the same boat as myself, as it seemed a lot of people were just settling, not really realizing that this awesome monitor exists. Does it have its shortcomings? Absolutely. Seems like every monitor does, but if you need a monitor that does both, I don't think you'll find a better option, at least for now. So with that said, let's jump into today's review. Welcome back to the channel, friends. If you're a regular around these parts, don't forget to drop a like and leave the hashtag OMG down in the comments below just to let me know who you are and who's part of the family. If you're new around here and you like videos and tutorials related to streaming and content creation, uh, like the one you're watching right now, uh, don't forget to subscribe by hitting the red subscribe button below and ring the bell next to it to be notified when I post new videos. Also, I stream on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday evening. Uh, so if you have any questions or feedback about today's video, uh, feel free to drop in and say hello whenever you see me live. Link as always for that will be down in the description below as well. All right, with the formalities out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it. So first let me say that this review is not meant to be a super technical deep dive into all the specs on this monitor and whether it meets all the specs that it claims to have, as there's already reviews out there that do just that and honestly, they do it much better than I would be able to do. I'm not a monitor reviewer. Uh, so I'll link my favorite one of those down in the description below uh, that you can watch after you finish this video if you're wanting some more information. Instead, I'll be going through what my experiences have been uh, using this monitor for the last couple months and why I think it's perfect for gamers who also want to create content, especially if you're like me and the thought of having two separate monitors and going between them, depending on whether you're a gaming or editing, seems like a total drag. All right, first, let's at least go through the basic specs of this display, and then we'll jump into kind of my thoughts on it. So this is made by LG. It's a 34 inch 1440p ultra wide monitor. Specifically, the resolution is 3440 by 1440p and features a 21 by nine aspect ratio. 
This aspect ratio is what gives it the ultra wide name as most monitors feature an aspect ratio of 16 by nine. Also, I decided to go with a 1440p monitor over a 4K, uh, simply because to be completely honest, uh, pushing 4K gaming content specifically, uh, you know, with currently with the systems, I mean, I have a 2080 uh, Super in my computer rig now, and to be honest, it would still have a hard time pushing 4K gaming content at a high enough FPS that I would want. Uh, so I believe 1440p currently in today's market is the best trade-off uh, between being able to run at very high frame rates uh, while still being quite a bit sharper than 1080p. Uh, for example, if you've got a 1080p monitor that was a super wide like this, uh, 34 inch, uh, it's, you're definitely gonna start noticing the pixels and stuff in it a lot more than with a 1440p monitor. And again, the trade-off is if you go to a 4K, uh, you're gonna have a super crisp display which is gonna be perfect for content creation. However, you're not gonna be able to achieve the uh, frame rates that you'd probably want in a game if you were trying to run it at 4k anyways Which means for gaming you'd most likely drop it down to a lower resolution anyways uh, Which means then you're spending money that you really don't need to spend the panel is a nano IPS uh, Panel which allows for super accurate colors and features a DCI p3 98% color gamut with HDR 400 certification Although it does a great job covering the RGB color space, even straight out of the box with this sRGB mode, it's not really great for HDR content if we're being completely honest. It's 144 hertz, however, it can be overclocked to 160 hertz. Uh, and according to LG, it features new IPS technology uh, in the panel that allows for one millisecond response times. Admittedly, if you set the monitor to its fastest mode, it does then come with drawbacks of its own. You're probably not gonna enjoy it as much as if it was a TN panel at one millisecond response times. So realistically, you're looking at about a four millisecond response time uh, from my own testing. It also features compatibility for both NVIDIA G-Sync as well as AMD FreeSync technologies, uh, which just basically allows your monitor to sync with the FPS of the game that you're playing up to the maximum 144 hertz of the monitor or 160 hertz if you're able to overclock yours. However, what really sets this monitor apart from other monitors though is the fact that straight out of the box, it has a pretty accurate color system, uh, which is something that's not true for most gaming monitors. While it's not perfect, if you're willing to download an ICC profile or color correct it yourself even further with a device that you can buy online, uh, it gets pretty dang close. And to be honest, even straight out of the box, it's pretty dang close. One big problem I had with my last monitor came about when I decided to start printing photos to hang them on my wall, creating a giant photo collage of all the places that I've visited and traveled, as well as important moments in my life. You see, when I got the photos and started reviewing them and getting ready to hang them on the wall, I noticed that the colors looked quite different from what they looked like when I was editing the photos inside Adobe Lightroom, you know, viewing them on my computer. Skin tones were way too orange, pictures too warm overall, uh, and if I dial in a color, to, a color to a specific hue that I thought looked good, uh, it would end up looking completely different in the print. And no matter what settings I changed on the monitor, uh, it just didn't cover enough of the color space to ever really get it quite right. This monitor so far seems to nail it quite well, especially after color correcting it. And again, honestly, even if you didn't wanna spend a hundred US dollars on a device to color correct the monitor, out of the box, it's still pretty dang good. And I don't think you'll have any issues uh, getting what you see on the monitor to be the same as what you see when you print something off uh, when you go to a Photoshop. Another great feature uh, when it comes to content creation is the fact that this is an ultra wide monitor, uh, meaning that it has that 21 by nine aspect ratio. Personally, this is my first ultra wide monitor and now that I have it, I could never really see myself going back to a normal 16 by nine aspect ratio. As to be honest, I really enjoy the fact that I have added real estate inside Adobe Premiere and Lightroom, and it allows me to have so much more information in front of me at one time, thus reducing the amount of time I'm wasting switching between different windows, tabs, and boxes inside programs like Adobe Lightroom or Premiere. While having an ultra wide monitor did not completely replace my two monitor setup, as I still do find a lot of value in having a second display on my desk for things like my chat or my OBS when I'm live streaming, it definitely has increased my productivity. And to just be completely honest, uh, it's a nice feature to have and just makes editing more enjoyable. 
For gaming, I've had zero issues with it besides the fact that the HDR400 certification is kind of bogus in my opinion. And this really isn't a monitor to buy if you're extremely interested in HDR content or gaming. While it's not as fast as a TA panel, like I said, even though it does claim to have a one millisecond response time, it's still plenty fast enough at about a four millisecond response time and unless you're like a hardcore competitive FPS gamer, which is something that I really don't play a lot of to begin with, I don't think that it's a big deal in the least bit. Again, this monitor really isn't meant to be the best gaming monitor, nor is it meant to be the best content creation monitor. Unfortunately, with each type, there's going to be sacrifices that are made. However, I think this monitor does a good job at making the best compromises uh, from each category to make it quite possibly the best monitor if you're wanting something that works well for both. If you're a gamer and content creator, the truth is for the $899 MSRP price tag, I think this thing does everything you needed to do outside of HDR content. And that's literally the only thing that I do wish this monitor performed better at. I can't even imagine if this thing had an HDR 1000 certification. That would make it completely amazing in my opinion. Is it pricey? Yes, but it's an amazing monitor that looks great features fast response time, uh, is packed full of extra features like a USB hub, plenty of ports for plugging things in, has super accurate colors, and should last you for years to come if you were to purchase it. Would I recommend it to other people? Absolutely. And to be honest, I'm glad I allowed myself to be talked into purchasing it uh, by my friend as part of my new setup, as so far it's been an absolute dream to have, uh, and I enjoy the shit out of it, if I'm being completely honest. It was exactly what I wanted out of a monitor. And to be honest, I was gonna go with something a little cheaper because I didn't quite wanna spend $900 on a monitor. Uh, my budget was more around 500. However, at the end of the day, I, I know what I wanna accomplish as a gamer and content creator. And I think it's a tool that's, that's worthy of the investment. And I think for $900, it's a good investment to make. Uh, because by the time you would try to buy two different monitors, even if you went with budget devices, I think you're going to get less features than what this thing has, uh, as well as going to have to upgrade sooner in the future. So with that said, thank you so much for watching my review of the LG Ultrawide 34 GN850. Uh, and if you're interested in picking it up for yourself, there will be a link down in the description below. Also, again, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to smash that like button. It helps me out tremendously. And if you enjoy videos related to gaming, live streaming, and content creation like this one, uh, then make sure to click the red subscribe button below as well as ring the bell next to it to be notified when I post new videos. Again, if there's any other questions you have about the monitor or anything that I did not answer, uh, I live stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday on Twitch, so feel free to jump on over to my live stream there. Uh, whenever you see me live and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. The link for that as always is also down in the description below. And until next time, peace out everybody.